Hello, I'm Lisa. Welcome to 100 Stories Deep. Today I am going to be reading Hole in the Wall by Ekka Kerrett and that is from this collection of short stories, The Bus Driver Who Wanted to Be God. I chose this book because I heard a short story by this author on a podcast and I really liked it. So I got hold of one of his books and this is the story that jumped out at me. So enjoy Hole in the Wall. On Bernadotte Avenue, right next to the central bus station, there's a hole in the wall. There used to be an ATM there once, but it broke or something or else nobody ever used it. So the people from the bank came in a pickup and took it and never brought it back. Somebody once told Udi that if you scream a wish into this hole, it comes true. But Udi didn't really buy that. The truth is that once, on his way home from the movies, he screamed into the hole in the wall that he wanted Ruth Rimmel to fall in love with him, and nothing happened. And once, when he was feeling really lonely, he screamed into the hole in the wall that he wanted to have an angel for a friend. And an angel really did show up right after that, but he was never much of a friend. And he'd always disappeared just when Udi really needed him. The angel was skinny and all stooped and he wore a trench coat the whole time to hide his wings. People in the street were sure he was a hunchback. Sometimes, when there were just the two of them, he'd take the coat off. Once, he even let Udi touch the feathers on his wings. But when there was anyone else in the room, he always kept it on. Klein's kids asked him once what he had under the coat, and he said it was a backpack full of books that didn't belong to him, and he didn't want to get them wet. Actually, he lied all the time. He told Udi such stories you could die. About places in heaven, about people who, when they go to bed at night, leave the keys in the ignition. About cats who weren't afraid of anything and don't even know the meaning of scat. The stories he made up were something else. And to top it all, he crossed his heart and hoped to die. Udi was nuts about him and always tried hard to believe him. Even lent him money a couple of times when he was hard up. As for the angel, he didn't do a thing to help Udi. He just talked and talked and talked, rambling off his harebrained stories. In the six years he knew him, Udi never saw him so much as rinse a glass. When Udi was in basic training and really needed someone to talk to, the angel suddenly disappeared on him for two solid months. Then he came back with an unshaven, don't ask what happened face. So Udi didn't ask. And on Saturday, they sat around on the roof in their underpants, just taken in the sun and feeling low. Udi looked at the other rooftops with the cable hookups and the solar heaters and the sky. It occurred to him suddenly that in all their years together, he'd never once seen the angel fly. How about flying around a little, he said to the angel. It would make you feel better. The angel said, forget it. What if someone sees me? Be a sport, Udi nagged. Just a little, for my sake. But the angel just made this disgusting noise from the inside of his mouth and shot a gob of spit and white phlegm at the tar-covered roof. Never mind, Udi sulked. I bet you don't know how to fly anyway. Sure I do, the angel shot back. I just don't want people to see me, that's all. On the roof across the way, they saw some kids throwing a water bomb. You know, Udi smiled, once when I was little, before I met you, I used to come up here a lot and throw water bombs on the people in the street below. I'd aim them into the space between that awning and the other one, he explained, bending over the railing and pointing down at the narrow gap between the awning over the grocery store and the one over the shoe store. People would look up and all they'd see was the awning. They wouldn't know where it was coming from. The angel got up too and looked down into the street. He opened his mouth to say something. Suddenly, Udi gave him a little shove from behind and the angel lost his balance. Udi was just fooling around. He didn't really mean to hurt the angel, just make him fly a little for laughs. But the angel dropped the whole five floors like a sack of potatoes. Stunned, Udi watched him lying there on the sidewalk below. His whole body was completely still, except for the wings, 
which were still fluttering a little, like when someone dies. That's when he finally understood that of all the things the angel had told him, none of them were true. That he wasn't even an angel, just a liar with wings. The end. So what really struck me in this story was the nature of the relationship between the two characters and how balanced it may or may not be. And I noticed that the angel never gets a name except for the angel, despite being described as a rubbish angel, really. So I wonder what your thoughts are on the balance in those characters' relationship. Uh, so that is all from me thank you very much for listening don't forget that you can hit subscribe using the link below and you can hear more stories from the 100 stories deep collection thanks for listening bye